at Gillette Stadium. Ashland is the Super Bowl champion of Division VI and the winner of the Aganis Trophy. around the goal and the 25 yard line, which is where balls are put into play when a foul has been committed in the circle. Uh, nothing else is really relevant to the uh, field hockey game. So those, those figures I give you will be just as a reference point for you to see where the ball is and how far it is from the goal line. On the far sideline, there was a, a clearance by Hopkinton, which went out of bounds. So uh, Ashton will have a free hit on the sideline by Maggie Reardon taking that. She's moving it down, further down to where it went out of bounds. All players, uh, when a free hit is taken, no matter what kind of a free hit it is, have to be at least five yards away from the ball. They can't move in towards the ball, try to play it until the, uh, until the player taking the free hit moves that ball. In any case, there was an attempt by the clockers to put it into the circle. It hit apparently a hopping in foot Called by the official was a white free hit. It goes over to the sideline. Daniel Moriarty uh, sends a centering pass in towards the circle. It was stopped by Hopkinton and controlled. And on the near sideline, the ball's out of bounds off of uh, Kate Campion. And Hopkinton has the free hit, side hit, side in hit. And it's uh, considered to be uh, a dangerous, high danger. Anything above the knees is dangerous. So Ashland will have the ball at about the 45-yard line. Free hit was taken by uh, Olivia Gleason. She sends it over to Nicole Moriarty. Loses possession. Hopkinton gets the ball. There's a free, the loose ball there, and the Hopkinton player uh, outruns the clocker. That was Alyssa Souza. She controls it inside the circle. There was a foul called in the circle against the defense, against Ashland. And in uh, prior to pandemic days, that would have been a corner play by Hopkinton. Instead, it's a, a, it's a free hit for Hopkinton at the 25-yard line, as you can see. Again, everybody's five yards away. Anytime that uh, free hit is taken from the 25 or in, it has to be controlled or dribbled by the player taking the free hit before it goes into the circle. She can't drive it directly into the circle with nobody touching it. If a defensive player touches it, of course, that's okay. There's a foot there by uh, the clockers and another free hit for Hopkinton. It was inside the 25, so she had to control that, which she did. Another foul inside the 20. Whenever there's a foul and the, the team that would have benefited from the foul controls the ball, it's called the whole whistle, and the, you'll, see this, you'll see the official signal in that direction. He or she will not blow the whistle unless um, the team that would have received the ball, the free hit, uh, is unable to control it. So that'll be a hold whistle, and that player is allowed to keep playing the ball and taking it further, and that's to move the game along and have it be a, uh, a smoother flowing game. So we have uh, 10 minutes just about 10 minutes straight up to go, five minutes into the game here in the first quarter. There was a ball out of bounds off of Hopkinson, so Ashland will have that free hit at the 16. And the pass is intercepted. Gleason's pass intercepted across the front of the circle by Hopkinson, but there was a foul in the circle by Hopkinson, so again, the Clockers will have a free hit at the 16.
got the foot hopping and foot. Yeah, okay. That was the whole whistle. He was waiting, he's waiting to see if the ball was going to be controlled by Ashland, and it wasn't. So the whistle was blown. Free hit was taken by Ashland. Ashland's trying to move it up. Kate Campion checking the uh, the Hopkins and player uh, Meg Muldoon. Ball's out of bounds apparently on the far sideline. It'll be a free hit. Side in for Hopkins. Ball is driven inside the 25. Hard to see those numbers in that shady area on the far sideline. Uh, Maggie Ridden was involved in that play. I think she was able to control it and send it up upfield. Again, Hopkins then controlled it though, brings it inside. Looks like it is inside the circle. And we have a foul that was probably a stick interference call against Ashland and Hopkins will have a free hit at the 25. Normally that would have been a corner, would have been a nice uh, goal scoring attempt uh, for Hopkinson on the play, but you see uh, Doyle moving that ball back to the 25, takes a free hit, passes over to the near side to uh, Meg Ridden, and there's a foul there, apparently a foot ball contact at the foot. It's called advancing in uh, infield hockey, and so Ashland will have the free hit up at the 16 yard line. Look like uh, it looked like uh, Natalia Arona was having some trouble with her headgear there, and she just tossed it right off and out of her way so she could uh, maybe see better. She's putting her goggles back on. She can't play without those goggles. And, and they're not really goggles. They're just eye protection. They're metal. They're open. No glass. No uh, plastic on them. Official is holding the free hit until she's able to get legally equipped again. Must be difficult out there with the cold, but at least the wind has died down and the young ladies don't have to deal with uh, the wind that we had this afternoon. Free hit by Gleason, bounces up field. Nobody reacted to that swing and a miss because she hadn't touched it. Or moved it, I should say. And again, there's a clearance by Hopkinton on the far side, which goes out of bounds. So it'll be a side in for Ashland. Looks like Ridden taking that hit. This time it's Hopkinton with the side in at about the 45 yard line on their offensive end. She passes it well downfield inside the 10 yard line and uh, she's trying to take it into the circle. Yeah, but she's unable, it's stolen by Arjona maybe over there on that side. I think that's a number three. And Arjona passes it up, but it goes out of bounds, so it'll be a side in for Hopkinton. Again, they're on the far sideline, so it's a little difficult to catch uh, where the out of bounds line is and who it is, uh, or when it goes out of bounds. But it is uh, Ashland ball this time. Notice she passes it back. That was Arjona, controlled kicked apparently by Gleason. So Hopkinton had the free hit and another attempt into the circle, but it goes out of bounds off Hopkinton. Whenever that ball goes out of bounds off of the offensive team, uh, the ball comes straight out from where it went out of bounds to the 16 and the defensive team, or in this case, the Ashland Clockers, have, the, have a free hit at the 16 yard line. Short pass, what was the problem here? Oh, she had it at the wrong spot. Yeah, that's right. She had it at the 16. It went out of bounds. She... Yeah, there you go. Now she's at the 16. Pass deflection by the clock is up to midfield. That was sight on the deflection, uh, but it was controlled by Mara Souza for the uh, Hillers. Foul against Hopkinton on that play, so it'll be a free hit coming out for Ashland. Don't know where that'll be exactly. We'll see where uh, we'll see where uh, Gleason sets the ball. She sets it just about at the 20-yard line. A little bit high on that, but the official didn't call it. wasn't dangerous. 
was kind of an arcing hit. I'm back in here. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty. Lost control. Anyhow, we've got uh, we've got Reardon controlling the ball. Gleason rather controlling the ball near sideline. Tries to pass it out to midfield, but it's intercepted by uh, by Hopkinton. Sharma, Vani Sharma. Uh, she takes a shot, which is which goes out of bounds. So that'll be a 16-yard uh, hit for uh, Ashland straight out from where it goes out of bounds. 16 is the, any place along the 16 yard line from the baseline is where they would take that play. It doesn't have to be right at the top of the circle. Another pass out by the clockers. There was Ahona receiving the pass on that free hit by Amanda Sight. Again, a foul against Ashland. Ahona takes it, intercepted by the clockers by uh, the Hillers rather at about the 40. Nice short little pass by Hopkinton, but there's nobody there. That was uh, Sarah Doyle trying to make that pass. Nobody there, goes out of bounds. So again, it'll be brought up to the 16 yard line for a free hit by the clockers. <coughs> three minutes, just over three minutes to go in the first quarter here. No score. Or at Kunis Field, we're brought to you by Roses Automotive in the Marathon Deli. And again, Hopkinton has that ball inside the Ashland def uh, defensive end. And the clockers are not able to move it out very long, very easily or for very long. The Hopkinton is continuing to keep that ball inside the offensive end for them. They haven't really, I don't think there have been any saves by um, our goalie, Matty Flynn, which is good. But we'd like to see that play, uh, Ashland carry the play down to the uh, other end of the field and try to get some scoring opportunities for themselves. I refer to the circle, by the way, as a goal cannot be scored unless it's shot from inside the circle. So the object is to get that ball in the circle and hit somebody with a pass or get a deflection that was obstruction called against Hopkinton. Ashland will have the free hit. Uh, get a deflection in the circle um, and score a goal. There can't be a goal scored if it's, if it's shot from outside the 16 and there's no uh, offensive touch in the circle. If there's a defensive touch, then it'll be a, it'll be a free hit for Hopkinton. Ball is finally up at midfield. Lauren Burak involved in the play for the clockers. Again, a foul against the clockers and the free hit taken by Doyle. She sends it 25 yards into the offensive end for, for the Hillers and there is a foul against Ashland. It was uh, inside the circle. So again, it'll be a 25 yard hit for the Hillers. Five yard pass, shot on goal, which misses and is out of bounds and that'll be a 16 yard hit for uh, for the clock is coming out. The, uh, when that free hit is taken from inside the 25, and I think I mentioned it already, it has to be controlled or dribbled by the person taking that free hit. It can't be driven directly into the circle. Uh, that would be a violation. So she's got to either dribble it five yards or pass it to a teammate who, who takes it into the circle or drives it into the circle. It has to be some kind of control shown by the team with the ball before it goes into the circle. And then, of course, you've got a chance for, an, uh, for a goal as an offensive opportunity. We've got a bouncing pass from outside the circle, which doesn't touch anybody, and it's called a 16-yard hit for Ashland. We're getting a lot of those. We're getting a lot of 16-yard hits. And a lot of shots have been off the mark. We're down under, uh, we're down under, we're down to about 10 seconds to go here. Down under a minute, I was going to say, but we're, we're almost done with the first quarter here at uh, Cunis Field. Free hits taken by the clockers. That's uh, Elena Morgan taking the free hit. And that should do it. I didn't hear a horn, but that's the end of the first quarter here at Kunis Field. 
and we have the Hopkinton, visiting Hopkinton Hillers and the homestanding Ashland Clockers playing a game that should have been played on, uh, originally scheduled, I'm sorry, not should have been, but originally scheduled on Saturday, I believe. And uh, of course, we know what happened on Saturday with nearly five inches of snow here in October, which broke the local record, the all-time local record for snow in October. One day, we, we broke the record. Uh, and then there was an attempt to play it yesterday, and uh, we finally got a, a cleared field. And we're playing here at uh, Chili Cunis Field on Monday night, the 2nd of November. This is Bob Terosian back at Cunis Field for the second quarter of tonight's game between the visiting Hopkinton Hillers and your Ashland Clockers. The rebroadcast of this game and all other games that are telecast by WACA is available uh, during the week and on the weekends whenever to check the schedule. Uh, I don't know what channel or what carrier you have. I do know that if you have Verizon, it's channel 40. And again, as we had in the first quarter, we have Hopkinton taking the starting hit. And of course, the clock is will have it to start the second half and to start the fourth quarter, uh, the third period, of course, and the fourth quarter. The clockers are out now. And that's... Uh, Jordan Sherman taking the, oh no, that's Jordan, that's uh, Melissa. Melissa Leone taking that pass back for the clockers. She passes it on the near side to Emily Flynn, but there's an obstruction called against Emily Flynn. Obstruction is when a player uses her body to keep the, the opposing player from playing the ball. Uh, in basketball, that's great, but in field hockey, it's not allowed. If you're dribbling the ball or controlling it with your back to the body, that's a different story. But you have to you have to be in control and moving that ball left or right, back or forth, in order for you not to be called for obstruction. And that was the call that gave the ball to Hopkinton, which didn't the possession didn't last very long, and it's out of bounds on the far side. Jordan Sherman, I think, was the last touch for Ashland. It'll be a side in for Hopkinton right in front of their bench. Looked like a Leone controlling the ball, but apparently she didn't control it long enough or have it in possession long enough, and the obstruction was called against her. Against uh, Again, it'll be a free hit for Hopkinton. Control looks like it bounced over somebody's foot. Yep, it was the dribbler's foot. So Ashland took the free hit. Action on the far side, comes back towards the center of the field, and it's intercepted there by the clockers. Number four, that's Emmy Flynn, and it's sent out of bounds on the near side by Hopkinton. The pass was intended for, on the near side, pass was intended for uh, Camille Perlov. Jordan Sherman takes the side in, sends it across field, which is controlled by Ashland. Pass into the circle, or attempt into the circle, to Leone. It was Flynn trying to get it to Leone. Leone was marked and unable to control it, and the ball comes out. Hopkinton uh, controls the ball for quite a ways. Quite a control by Mara Susan. She gets it right downfield, almost into the circle before there isn't a, a foul called against Ashland. I think that was probably a stick obstruction uh, you can't hit the stick while the dribbler is uh, in control of the ball. So Hopkinton has a free hit inside the 25, so we're looking for a five-yard control of pass. That's uh, number 16, Maya N Hosh taking the hit. Nice control. You can see there that she's controlling the ball. There was no obstruction 
called against Camille Perlov on that play because she was able to dribble and control that ball despite the fact that the Ashland player was within playing distance. And there's an interception and a race to the ball. And Ellery Shute is the first one to it. She controls it, obstruction right there. And it wasn't called, thank you. Again, the long pass is out of bounds. Slowed down by the snowbank, but continues on to the track and almost to the fence. But we have spare balls behind the net. Free hit by the clockers on the far side at the 16. And she's waiting to see who's open. I can't see her number, but she does get it through. Briefly briefly stopped by Hopkinton, but Ashland again controls the ball and brings it upfield. And Hop Ashland now has a nice lift pass attempt by Tilioni. That was executed by Danielle Moriarty and Ashland has the ball inside the 20, inside the 25 yard line into the circle. He only takes a shot. It was blocked. I think it was inside the circle. So if she had gotten that through and by the goalie, that would have been a goal. It's still Ashland possession. There'll be a free hit somewhere. We'll see where they place it. 20. Oh, it's at the 25. Okay, so it has to it has to move or be passed or dribble five yards before it can go into the circle. Anyhow, there's control there. Yeah, there's five yards, but the pass is there. Errant doesn't make it to the uh, intended receiver for Ashland and Hopkinton has control of the ball, but now it's intercepted on the near sideline by, si by Sidney Witkins. Witkins fights for the ball. Back and forth we go. Witkins and Perlov. Witkins attempts a, a lifted pass over the stick of Perloff, executed nicely, but it does be, nobody there to pick it up and it did go out of bounds off of uh, Ashland. So it'll be Emma Torgerson taking the side in for Hopkinton. That was outside the 25, so she could have driven that straight into the circle if she was had been able to, and it would not have been a violation. Pass across field being chased down by Danielle Moriarty. She's all over the field. And it's intercepted by Hopkins and pass back to uh, Jordan Sherman. Sherman passes it up, followed by Hopkinson. It'll be a free hit for the clockers. Looks like Moriarty there. Nope, she's not gonna take it. Sherman is the one that takes the free hit. It almost makes it, it was, uh, outside the 25, so it almost made it into the circle without a touch. It was stopped by Hopkins in there. Moriarty picks up the ball on the far side, gets it into the circle. It's stopped by the uh, Hopkins defense. Passed away from the net, of course. That's the best place to go with the ball, away from the net, not straight out. Left or right is the best way to try to clear that ball. It is cleared finally over the sideline, so it'll be a free hit side in for the Clockers. Jordan Sherman taking that. She passes it in. Quickly over to Emily Flynn. Flynn tries to get it into the circle. Again, it's stopped by Hopkins and sent out of bounds on the far side. Ball's in. Intercepted by Hopkinton, controlled for a bit, and a pass comes out to midfield, and she's, oh, nice play, nice defensive play, and a, uh, a side edge of the stick pass upfield here at about the 45-yard line by uh, Sidney Witkins by the Clockers. That saved a, a, a breakaway by Hopkinton. The edge of the stick is a, is a, a, a learned skill it's legal. You can't use the back, the rounded part of the stick. But anything, any pass or dribble used with the edge of the stick is legal. It has to stay flat, though. It has to stay on the ground, on the, on the field. It can't be lifted. Any kind of lift would be considered to be uh, not in control, and you have to be in control of the ball when you're using the edge, the stick edge. <laughs> the 
clock is in control of the ball on the far side. Two clock is on the ball, nobody marking them. The ball's inside the 20. Hopkin attempting to get it out. Can't. Foul committed against Ashland. Hopkin then takes the hit right away. Doesn't wait to move it up to the 16. She just took it and blasted it out of there. And it looks like it's about to go out of bounds on the far side. Nope, stays in. Controlled by Hopkin and briefly fouled by Hopkin and it was an obstruction. It'll be Ashland ball. The field. The field seemed to have changed. There's a little locking of sticks there. Let's see if there's a stick obstruction called. Yep, it was called against Hopkinton. So it looks like uh, Ayla Halleck over there on the far side has the free hit. We're in the second period, six minutes to go. Still no score here at Cunis Field. Pass into the center field area. Inside the 50, so I won't call it midfield. Nice poke check by the clockers. It was lucky number 13, Olivia Gleason, briefly, but controlled by Hopkinton. And now Hopkinton has a two on one with Sherman moving down there. Nice pass across. But broken up by Morgan for the clockers. And there's a foul inside the circle. And I thought I saw the official signal a 25-yard hit. We'll see what it is. Yep, it is. Would have been a corner. 25-yard hit for Hopkinton going in. Control, touch. So it can go inside the circle, and it is inside the circle. Shot lined up by the Hillers, but unable to get one off. Nice defense by the Clockers, and that's a dangerous stick call against the Hillers on that play. She lifted that stick above the shoulder. That's not allowed with a, with a, a opposing player within playing distance, and she missed the ball as well. So it made it an easy call for the official on that. Clockers have a free hit at the 16. Over to the left-hand side. Sherman again passes it up the sideline to Flynn. Intercepted by Hopkinton. Sherman again takes control of it. Oh, kicked out. It'll be a side in by Emily Flynn. Side in for uh, Hopkinton. And right in front of us here by Emma Torgerson. She hits a bounce pass, a bouncer across the field to one of her teammates, Prilov. Prilov is marked on the far side by Morgan. Ball is stopped. There was a violation on Hopkinson, so it'll be a free hit at the 30 for the Hillers. Controlled at about the 25. By the Hillers into the circle, but it's driven out by the Ashland defense, which is holding very, very strong here tonight. The clockers are led by Coach Molly Bennett. And oh, they had a foot there in front of us, so that was an easy call for me to make too, Emily Flynn, so it'll be hopping in free hit. That's uh, Muldoon taking it, intercepted. Controlled again by Hopkinton. Dribbled down. S edge pass, stick edge pass. And that was a bouncer. I, I think that should have been called because there was no control there. In any case, it went to the top of the circle. It was a shot, a weak shot taken from just outside the circle looking for a tip in. Didn't happen. Ball was driven to the left of uh, Maddie Flynn, the clocker goaltender. And again, it'll be a 16-yard hit coming out for the Ashland defense. We're down inside of, uh, we're down about two and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Second period at Cunis Field. That was a lift. Yep, that'll be called. That was right at the Hopkinton uh, defender, who was five yards or more away. So Hopkinton will have that hit inside the 20. Again, we're looking for control, five-yard control or dribble before it goes into the circle. Oh, it's at the 15, okay. Thought she was starting her dribble, here we go. Now we start. Looked like there was a Ashland foot in there. No, it was controlled by Hopkinton, so no call. It was a whole whistle. Edge, stick edge pass into the circle, right in front of the net. The shot was taken, 
and it looked like Flynn made the save and tried to dove to try to keep it from going into the net. I thought it wasn't going to go in, but she wasn't taking any chances on that. So it went off of Flynn. So again, because it went off the defense, it'll be a 25-yard hit for the Hillers coming in. Oh, that won't count. Yep, and it was high. Back to the 25 where the original hit was taken. Pass out coming to the near side. Went to uh, Gleason. Gleason sends it way up. Down to about the 20 or 25 yard line. And it looks like the call is for the clockers. I don't know where the hit's going to be, though. I can't see the ball. There you go. Okay. The ball's retrieved by a Hiller player and passes it to. Uh, a Halleck for the clockers, and she starts to play it just outside the 25-yard line. But it doesn't touch anybody. goes out of bounds. It'll be a free hit at the 16 for the Hill is coming out. We're down under a minute now. Still no score. Hopkinton has had the edge in uh, field play and the offensive end, uh, but have been really unable. I think, I think Flynn has made one save, really. There have been numerous shots on goal which have missed. Clock is a finally getting it inside the offensive end, but the period they only have about 20 seconds to put one in here. It'd be a nice finish to the first half if they could put one in. Uh, they've got the free hit. 11 seconds. Ball's moved upfield by Hopkinton. Controlled by Ashland. She's inside the 30. And that's the horn. That was Melissa Leone with the play. So that is the end of the first half here at Cunis Field. Hopkinton, Ashland. Field hockey, 0-0 is the score. We'll have a five-minute break now uh, before we start the second half. Today's game is brought to you in part by Marathon Deli. Marathon Deli offers a full range of lunch and dinner items for dining or catering. Fine cold cuts, cheeses, and meats also available, in addition to specialty wraps such as the Mayflower Wrap, as well as the Honey Bee Wrap. You'll be sure to get your mouth watering. Serving Metro West for over 24 years, give them a call at 508-231-1859 or find them on the web at marathondeli.com. Thank you to Rose's Automotive for their donation of masks and gloves to use during sports productions to keep the WACA crew safe. You can find them at 26 North Main Street in Sherburne, reach them on the phone at 508-650-1628, or find them on the web at rosesautomotive.com. Welcome back to Cunis Field for the second half of the uh, tonight's game between the Hopkinton Hillers and the Ashland Clockers. Field hockey, that is. We have Hopkinton in position to take the starting pass back for the third quarter. Obstruction against Ashland on that play, so Hopkinton has a free hit. We have no score. No score here at, here at Cuna, uh, Cunis Field. Uh, play was m pretty much dominated by the Hillers in the first half down to our right. Um, no, no goals being put in by Hopkins, unfortunately. Didn't have any real good attempts, but they did can have the field advantage. The Clockers this half are shooting to our right. Same goal that Hopkinton was shooting at in the first half. The ball is on the far sideline, out of bounds on the far sideline. It'll be a free hit for Ashland. This game, of course, is brought to you in part by the Marathon Deli and Roses Automotive here in town. We really appreciate their financial support and hope you will take advantage of the fine services they provide. It's a free, uh, free hit by Hopkinton. 
coming out controlled up field nice plays by two players over there which numbers I can't get I think one of them is uh, Doyle yeah she's playing center again there's a foul by Clockers Hopkins has the ball but it's intercepted nice edge stick pass whistle it will be uh, Ashland ball at about the 40 difficult to see that number from uh, at the angle that we have there but I think that was uh, Kira Cooney number 16 she passes it across field and down and it's out of bounds deep inside of the uh, Ashland offensive end it'll be a free hit side in for Hopkinton and the clockers will try to intercept that pass and keep the ball in their offensive end a little bit of a wild stick there it went out of bounds so it'll be clocker side in it appears uh, Nicole Moriarty is going to be taking that side in for the clockers no nope. she leaves it for Jordan Sherman and we're looking uh, Looking to get that ball inside the circle. Nice pass. Oh, and a save by the Hopkin and goaltender. Kept in by the clockers inside the circle. Again, there's an opportunity to score a shot that doesn't make it through the defense. No save by the goalie. The clockers have come out firing on all eight cylinders in this first half. Again, we're playing four 15-minute quarters here this year and for ever more until the National Federation changes the rules, if ever. But we're playing four 15-minute quarters instead of two 30-minute halves. There are no timeouts a lot. There used to be uh, two per team previously. But because they're playing 15 minutes and allowing two minutes between periods and at least five, if not ten, be at the half, the uh, timeouts by the teams have been eliminated. We are playing a seven-on-seven -seven game, which is not this is a reduced game. Normal field hockey is 11-on-11, 11 11, 10 field players and a goaltender. Seven-on-seven seven gives, uh, gives a wide open field. Teams have... Uh, if you if you can you can't see it maybe but the clockers have two defensive players back normally they might be th three or even four staying back so it's a more uh, offensive generated uh, focused game unfortunately we haven't had any successful shots by either team of course we pr prefer it to be from uh, the clocker side I'm sure the cold is having some effect I know these girls are young and and they're pretty much immune to the cold that we are as older folks. But uh, the wind has died down. The temperature's in the 30s. So as long as you keep moving out there, which they are, they'll stay warm. And we're looking for uh, the girls in white to uh, put a, a goal into the net and maybe take a, an early lead here in the second half. Wild stick there, but not called by Hopkinton. Again, that follow through was above her shoulder, and there was a clocker player, Kate Campion, nearby, very close by, within striking distance of that high stick. That should always be called. It can lead to dangerous play. Again, there's always the whole whistle, uh, but when there's something dangerous there, um, the whole whistle. Uh, take second priority there. The first thing is safety. Can't see. Okay, there's the ball at the 16. It's clock a ball at the 16. That was Danielle Moriarty passing it out to her teammate Jordan Sherman but it's stolen by Hopkinton. Hopkinton dribbles down. There's a foul against Sherman. Hopkinton takes a quick free hit. It's called a self-start. 
that's allowed. She doesn't have to wait for people to set up or the defense to be five yards away. She can quickly take what's called a self-start free hit. Uh, if there is somebody from the defense who's not five yards away when she does that, uh, she's not allowed, the defense is not allowed to play that ball. She can mark the player, but she can't try to play the ball. Okay, and the ball is out of bounds off of Hopkinton on the far, to the left of, uh, of our net. Natty Flynn, I, by my count, has one save so far tonight in the first half. That 16 yard hit was passed out, foul committed by Hopkinton at about the 30. And again, it's sent out. Long, two long hits by Arjona, I think, over there in the front. No, it's not Arjona. Uh, it might be Kira Cooney. Yeah, I think it's Cooney. But it comes back in, and it's guarded out of bounds by Sherman. She saw that it was going out of bounds off of green and let it go so that the clockers have the free hit now at the 16. Again, it's Cooney over there taking the free hit, but this time it's intercepted by Hopkinton. Hopkinton has the free hit just outside the circle. Yeah, she, she didn't, that was... That ball was uh, about two yards outside the circle, and she dribbled straight into the circle. That's not five yards. So the, f the play was called, and again, the free hit went to uh, the clockers. Again, it was Cooney taking that free hit on the far sideline. She passes it upfield to the upfield to Mary Burak. I think that was 11, but that ball is intercepted at midfield again by Hopkinton. The Hopkinton defense, or their six field players, not allowing the clockers to get that ball uh, over that 50-yard line. Again, it's out of play. Off green, I think. Nope, green's going to get it. It's off white. So it'll be a 25-yard hit for Hopkinton, straight away from the net, because it went out just to the side of that left post. Sub coming in for uh, Ashland now. Emily Flynn save made by by a, her sister Natty Flynn it was on net but it wasn't a very uh, very hard shot she cleared it it went off of her pads out of bounds again because it went off the defense that's a 25 yard hit for the Hillers why is she playing it at the 20? No, okay, she wasn't sure where the 25 was. There we are. She controlled it for five, drove it into the circle, but it's intercepted by Ashland. Briefly, but the ball does move, continue to move upfield. Amanda Sight in there on the play, attempting to slow the uh, Hiller, def uh, Hiller offense down. But it is controlled, and it's inside the circle now. And there's an edge shot taken, blocked by the clockers. Never made it through to Flynn. That was a reverse stick shot, a bouncer that Flynn saves. Another shot from inside the circle, but it's smothered by the Ashland defense. Another shot. So there's one save in that flurry, two or three, maybe four shots. One save by Flynn on the play, and the ball's out of bounds off of White. So Hopkinton will again have a 25-yard hit coming in. There's 4.50 to go here in the third quarter. Still no score. Free hit taken by, it was a control. It was a self-start by uh, Hopkinton but it is in, intercepted and then the foul committed by uh, Hopkinton. Ashland tries to bring it up. Again, it's intercepted and stopped by the green. Green is knocking on the door constantly, but the Ashland defense is up to the task and is keeping them out of net. Maddie Flynn is not allowing uh, anything to go in the goal. 
Well, if you can't score, you've got to shut the other team down, and that's what they're doing. It's a shot from outside the circle, but it's smothered by the Ashland defense. Again, I think that's Cooney over there. I'm assuming it's Cooney. She's playing left side half. Cooney controls it, dribbles it. It's stolen by Hopkinton. It's out of bounds. Yep, that's out of bounds. 16 yard hit white. Looked like it was heading out, then it stopped. I couldn't tell whether it was out of bounds or not, but it is off green. Again, Cooney with the free hit, the 16 yard hit on the far side. He'd love to get it out of there and get it down into the offensive end for the clockers. Intercepted, dribbled down by Hopkinton. A wild shot taken on the far side, trying to get it into the circle. It doesn't make it through, but Hopkinton does control the ball. Again, it's a free hit from the 25. Must have been in the circle. I couldn't see the circle line. The, the white lights are reflecting off the green turf, and it's difficult to see that line from this angle. It's easy to figure it out, though, when you see which way the players are going and where the ball is placed. Again, there's a shot. Not on net. Out of bounds. Off green. It'll be a 16-yard hit white. And let's see. It's not Cooney taking it this time. I think that's Maggie Reardon taking the free hit. She dribbles to the... This side, the right side of the field, passes it up, which doesn't make it through to one of her teammates, but does bounce up to about the 40. Controlled by uh, Vanny Sharma for the, for the green, but that's intercepted. And there's a foot in there, and she controls it. No, Crystal didn't call that. Thought there was a foot. Maggie Reardon was the one passing the ball up to green. It almost made it out of bounds. Well, there's a foot. Well, why are we giving it to green? Okay, she's just moving it back. Okay, so it's white ball, just about the 50-yard line. That's Sherman taking the free hit. Teammate trying to get loose. Oh, didn't make it through to the intended target was Ayla Halleck and Hopkins and intercepts it. And again, they have an offensive play going down inside the 40-yard uh, line, down to about the 30, but it switches fields again. That looked like Cooney driving that ball way up. It's not controlled by anybody. Finally stopped by Hopkinton deep in the uh, Ashland offensive end. We're down uh, to about a minute to go in the third quarter. Still no score here at Cunis Field. Hopkinton Hill is the visiting team playing the Ashland Clockers. Then we have a very tight game. This is the kind of game where when you're coaching, you say, girls, let's go. One goal is going to win this game. Let's put it in and play some defense. And we hope the clockers can be the ones to put it in first. Okay, side in, far side. Controlled by Ashland, moved up. Nice, nice open field dribble by Danielle Moriarty. Makes it inside the circle. She's got some help there by, uh, from Amanda Sight. It made it inside the Ashland circle, the Ashland offensive circle, and it's sent out of bounds by the Hopkinton defense. Far sideline, it'll be a side in. It's inside the 25, so it will, be, it will have to be controlled, and it's not. She took about two steps out and then tried to drive and drove it into the circle with no touch at all by offense or defense, so that's called out, and that's the end of the third quarter. Here at Cunis Field, and we still have no score. Welcome back to Cunis Field for the final fourth and final quarter of this Tri Valley League matchup between the visiting Hopkinton Hillers and your Ashland Clockers. There is no score after three quarters here. Not a lot of saves by the goalies. Not a lot of shots on goal. Hopkinton has the pass back to start the, the fourth quarter. 
and it's controlled back over the 50 on the near side. Camille Perlov in there on the play for Hopkinton. Dribbled further down by uh, Muldoon, but it stopped on the near side by the Ashland defense. That was uh, Elena Morgan making a nice play. There was a Hopkinton advancing contact with the foot that was called, and Ashland had the free hit. Morgan passes it up, and, dri and it's dribbled down the near sideline by uh, Arjona. Nice play to get it inside the 20, inside the 10. Looks like Melissa Leone up, Melissa Leone fighting for the ball, trying to keep it in the offensive end. A quick goal here would be appreciated by the uh, by Maddie Flynn and Coach Molly Bennett and all the Hopkinton, all the uh, Ashland clockers tonight. It's been a hard-fought game, no score. Uh, it's a stick off of Green. The ball was hit pretty hard and it knocked the stick right out of her hands, out of bounds, uh, off of Hopkinton. Free hit on this near sideline. Side in is called by uh, Morgan. Morgan passes it out, attempted passes out by Sherman to Sherman. It was intercepted by uh, Hopkinton in midfield. And it's passed over to the far sideline, out of bounds. Appears to be off of Ashland. Side in is taken. Pass to midfield, intercepted by Ashland. Arjona fighting hard. Checking Ziegler there, who's dribbling, controlling the ball. Nice play by Ziegler. Finally poked away by Leone. Leone continues to, to mark as the ball goes to the sideline. Doesn't make it far enough. Finally controlled by the Hopkinton player. That was nice play by Leone to keep that ball in the offensive end. And it's finally, no, oh, yep, it is out of bounds. It'll be a side in. Cross field, Ahona can't control it. She continues mocking the uh, Hopkinton player. Picked up there. Oh, must have hit her foot. So it'll be a free hit Hopkinton. They take it right away. They don't wait for the defense to set up. Now it looked like there was a Hopkinton foot there. Yes, it was. And Morgan. Elena Morgan for, ha for Ashland has the free hit at about the 40-yard line. She dribbles about 10 yards. It's poked away by Hutchison and picked up by her teammate, Souza. And again, it's intercepted. But there was a foul on the play. Interception by Sherman. It'll be a free hit, Hopkinton. Free hits taken by Muldoon. Doesn't go very far. Stopped by Ashland. Yep, dangerous stick or stick interference. One or the other was the call. Looked like a stick interference was the call. Anyhow, Sherman will have the ball at about the 42-yard line with a free hit. It's on the field, not on the sideline. She dribbles it a bit, 5, 10 yards. Pass it. Nice. Oh, yes. Nice push up and... Leone picks it up deep down, dodges, makes it into the circle. Stick edge shot on goal, saved by the Hopkins and goaltender. It's out of bounds on the end line, not the sideline. So being off the end line, that'll be a 25-yard hit for the clockers. If she had kicked it out off the sideline, it would have been a side in way down inside the five-yard line. Oh, why did they give it to Hopkinton? Don't know why. Must have touched. Must have touched the national pay. We have a breakaway by Leone. A nice shot by Leone. Save. Nice attempt at a shot by Leone, and again it's taken away by Arjona. Shot across the net, looking for a deflection in front of the net. Nothing. Picked up by Hopkinton, number five. But it's, but it's intercepted by the Clockers. She doesn't allow her to take that ball away. That was Sight who kept it in into the circle. The clock is playing spirited ball here in this fourth quarter with no score. We're down under 10 minutes to go. 
One goal wins this game. Edge shot, no control, very high. That was a stick edge shot that she took, and as I said earlier, it has to stay on the, uh, on the field. And it was way high, head high, and that's called right away by the official. 16-yard hit by the clockers, intercepted, driven in, no goal if it goes in. It's wide of the net. So it'll be a 16-yard hit for the clockers coming out. Looks like uh, Elena Morgan retrieving the ball or getting a spare ball down there. Okay, she sets up at the 16 to the right of the net, the right of Maddie Flynn. Five-yard dribble, pass up to Arjona. Arjona deflects it over to Sherman. That's high off the Hopkinton stick. No call there because it's controlled by Ashland. That was Kate Campion controlling, now fighting for the ball. It's out of bounds off Campion. Green ball, far side. Push down inside. The 10 inside to the 5, but it's controlled by Ashland. And I can't get that number over there, but she's trying to keep it in, keep it out of the circle and get it down into the Ashland offensive end. Looks like the first half now where Ashland can't get the ball out of the defensive end. It keeps getting intercepted by Green. Anyhow, here we go. Nice breakaway. Leone waiting. Leone's got a break. He's got a shot on goal. She takes it. It's in. Goal. Leone for the clockers. I didn't catch that pass, but the pass made it happen. Leone had good control of the ball and put it into the right of the Hopkinton goaltender, and we have a score on the board for the clockers. 738 and counting to go here in the fourth quarter. The best defense is a good offense, but right now we've got to make sure that we don't let Hopkinson get down there and get some good attempts at uh, putting the ball in net past uh, Matty Flynn. The pass back is taken. That was a pretty goal by Leone. I'm sure we'd all like to have that be the winning goal. But long way to go yet. Seven minutes, straight up. Sherman taking the side in on the near side. Pass attempt up to Arjona, but it's controlled by Hopkinson. That's uh, Josie Ziegler. Ziegler passes up to midfield. It's, in, it's loose. It's not intercepted. Fighting for the ball on the far side is Campion. It's out of bounds off Campion. Clock is running. It's always running. The ball doesn't, uh, ball going out of bounds doesn't stop the clock. So it's, uh, it behooves the team that's behind to retrieve that ball as quickly as possible and, you know, get as, uh, lose as much time as, po uh, lose as little time as possible uh, retrieving the ball and having the ball out of bounds. Anyhow, we have, uh, we have uh, Hopkinton with the ball on the, on the far side, getting into the circle, winds up and takes a wild shot that was up, over her shoulder on the backswing and the miss on the, on, the, on the front side also was too high and wild and it's called by the official. It'll be a 16 yard hit right now. And when I was coaching, it was take your time. Don't retrieve that ball very quickly. The clock is your friend. Okay, the ball is, makes it all the way down into the offensive end. It's an uh, attempt to control by Nicole Moriarty, but it, uh, she's unable to, and Hopkinton does pass the ball up the near side to Luce, Sophia Luce. She takes an edge stick shot, which bounced, so it wasn't called, and I think that was the right call. There was nobody there to be danger to, and it, it wasn't, didn't go high right off of the, uh, thing. we have a loose ball, it's chased down by Hopkinton at about the 30. Ashland's going to try to keep it in the offensive end at this point. Official needs to get out of the way there. I 
Michael Moriarty with the free hit. She gets it through the hawk in the defense somehow. It wasn't, wasn't very strong, but it made it through. Loose the control and passes it up into the uh, Hiller offensive end, but it's stopped there and sent over to the far side by Gleason. Free hit was uh, controlled by was taken by Hopkinton, and it is controlled into the into the uh, deep into the in offensive end. But it does go out of bounds off of the Hillers. So again, take your time down there and get it up to the 16, and take the free hit, and the ball bounces to midfield. Nicole Moriarty in on the fight there. She controls it, but it is uh, a foul committed, and it'll be a free hit for Hopkins and inside the 50, or right out the 50, okay. Free hit taken, a little bit wild. I don't know if it touched the white, but it's out of bounds. It didn't, so it'll be a side-in for, for um, the clockers at about the 20-yard line. 3.28 to go here in the Fourth quarter with the Ashland clock is sitting on a 1-0 lead. Looking for some insurance here. But even if they don't get it, as long as they keep it in the offensive end, Hopkins can't score. Into the circle. Daniel Moriarty into the circle. It goes to the far side, still inside the 20-yard line, but it's driven up by Hopkinton up to midfield. Controlled over there by the clockers, but the pass is intercepted. It's edge stick, yep, no control. That was high, that was head high with the edge. Nice pass, that makes it through. But there's nobody there to pass it to. She's going to have to fight the uh, Hopkins and player for the control of the ball. Ball's out of bounds, and he's signaling for the clockers to have the side in. Okay, that's an obstruction call once it's the one against the clockers on that play. Turn around. Nope. I thought the free hit was taken, but I guess it was. It was, yeah. You gotta keep your eye on the ball. Looked like a kick there by Green, but I guess not. Anyhow, they control it down. Whistle's blown. Yep, he caught it. The official on the far side caught that. The call is made. Controlled by the clockers. Intercepted by Hopkinton. Gleason's in there trying to slow down the play. We have 150 to go here in the game. There's urgency from both sides. Hopkinton trying to tie it up and Ashland trying to sit on that one goal lead and not give up the tying goal. Again, nice dodge by Hopkinton. Pass up. It's loose. Run down by uh, Ashland. Control. Stolen by Hopkinton. Again, it's an edge. Again, it's high. The official on the far side is on top of that stick edge, no control pass. 117 to go. And the ball is up at the 50 yard line, run down by Hopkinton. Blasted into the offensive end. There's dribble control there by the Hopkinton player, so there's no obstruction. Stolen. That was steal by Whitkins over there on the far side on the defense. Ashland now has set up a three, three girl defensive set. They're just playing safe, making sure they don't allow that goal or a good shot on goal by Hopkins. And 30 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. The clock is sitting on a one goal lead. The crowd's going crazy. There's a lot of pounding going on and cheering by the few people that are here, of course. It's 36 degrees out there. Fortunately, the wind has died down. 20 seconds to go, free hit Ashland. Ball is down inside the 30. The right place for it, just keep it down there, they can't score. Ball is down, intercepted again. And nice play, nice control by that defensive player over there, I think that's Witkins. And that's the end of the game. Final score. 
Ashland Clark is one. Hopkins and Hill is zero. Winning goal, only goal of the game, scored by Natalie Leone in the fourth quarter. Again, we want to thank the, uh, the sponsors that we have today that make these uh, telecasts uh, possible, Marathon Deli and Roses Automotive. The Clockers will next play again on Saturday. I think at 11 o'clock. I haven't checked the schedule yet, but I know the next game is Saturday. So we can hope they have a good week of practice and be ready for the next game. Today's game is brought to you in part by Marathon Deli. Marathon Deli offers a full range of lunch and dinner items for dining or catering. Fine cold cuts, cheeses, and meats also available, in addition to specialty wraps such as the Mayflower Wrap, as well as the Honey Bee Wrap. They'll be sure to get your mouth watering. Serving Metro West for over 24 years, give them a call at 508-231-1859 or find them on the web at MarathonDeli.com. A special thank you to Roses Automotive for their donation of masks and gloves to use during sports productions to keep the WACA crew safe. You can find them at 26 North Main Street in Sherburne, reach them on the phone at 508-650-1628, or find them on the web at rosesautomotive.com.